gonna move now. Well, uh, I was in the military, um, stationed overseas, and um, that's what this poem is about. Just being away from those that you that you love, I guess, or that you think you love at the time, and uh, and uh, you still kind of, I guess, succumb to human desire or whatnot. Um, since JD was uh, stationed at the same base that I was at, this will this will be for him tonight. Uh, this poem is called Furlough, uh, May 1999. While my uniform sleeps on a chair back next to unpolished boots, I barrel deep through broken roads, race far away from RAF Milton Hall. My date, a local girl, laughs at my accent as I call out tongue-heavy signs of the English countryside. The same way tourists back home parse through Tishomingo and Kosciuszko. She asked me about America. Well, last month in January was our first um, initiation of the series, and we invited the Bayou Writers Group to come read. And um, they're a local group that brings in anyone who's interested in writing and reading and reviewing and critiquing. So this month we decided to do a little um, different. We have a duo reading between William Les Coppage and J. Bruce Fuller. They're two graduate students at the MFA program in their final semester, so they're reading parts of their thesis here. Um, and next month we're going to bring in the Louisiana Poet Laureate Daryl Bork to come read for us. In the burnt water methodically churn the river and from this distance the frothy wake appears heavenly like cotton that once burst from ripened bowls where in youth's savage memory its white dense wetness streams from finger to finger in great delight. Thank y'all so much. Well, Poetry in Lake Charles, it has a very unique flavor in that it is Southwest Louisiana and we do have a very specific feel to um, literature here. You have a very specific setting, culture, um, cultural heritage, so you do bring that here at Poetry, um, the Poetry Night here. And McNeese really ties into it because we do tap into that MFA program that is really highly ranked in the nation. So we're bringing, and these people in the program, they're from around the United States, they're not just from here, so you're bringing in not only local talent, but also nationwide talent. And we are seeing an influx in poetry nights around town. Stellar Beans just started one. Um, you know, here at the porch we have a monthly one. So by seeing this explosion of poetry in Lake Charles, it's really a good sign of a very healthy culture here in southwest Louisiana. I think of my father and read this. The winter trees were bare, but mistletoe hung high and green in the bitter pecans. In the kitchen doorway, none was hung. So Grandma asked us to take our new shotguns and shoot some down for her. The fields were brown. The pasture grass broke crisp beneath our feet. One tree stood against the gray horizon, and Papa aimed high in its crown. The sweet, oiled sound of the gun echoed across hayfields. When you Shattered read a poem branches, and it makes you want to read it out loud, that, that's exciting because a poem is just words. Uh, so the fact that you're not just reading it in your head, you read something on a page that makes you want to maybe yell it out or just read it out loud while you're alone, that, that just seems to have some power, uh, an incantatory power that words can have. It's amazing. Those embryonic leftovers, those forgotten appendages that allowed us to swim in brown water, swim, then hop, then run, then fly. We had no golden plates, no silver chalice, no silk sheets. We were ready to be thrown across the plywood floors to burst in a cloud of talcum.